Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I'm excited to show you my favorite new features inside of Signal 3.0. We just came out with a huge new update to Signal, and in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite features to help you animate your looping animations and any parameter inside of Cinema 4D. So if you're a Plus member, go grab the latest version and let's head on in and let me show you all of my favorite new features inside of Signal 3.0. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D, and the first thing I wanted to show you was where to grab the latest version of Signal 3.0. If you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can go up into your Grayscale Gorilla menu, open up the Grayscale Gorilla Hub, and you'll see all of the updates there, including the latest version of Signal. Don't forget to also install Drop Zone and all the new material collections and everything else included. And if you're not a Plus member yet, now is a great time to go check it out. We just released a ton of new stuff, including Signal 3.0, some new material collections, some new textures. Definitely go to the site and check out everything now included with every Grayscale Gorilla Plus membership. All right, let's talk about Signal and Fields. Fields is now fully compatible with every Signal tag, and let me show you how easy this is. In this case, we have this nice little puzzle box here, and we have these bouncing ball animations that are animating up and down each one of these balls. Now, they're not being triggered yet, and that's because they're being controlled by a field. In this case, we're using this linear field, and you can see if I just slowly move this field over, it's going to trigger each one of those ball animations to start animating at different times. Now, compare this to where if you didn't use a field and we just started to animate, you can see they all jump up and down at the same time. Now, if you wanted to add variations to this, you would have had to animate all of these separately or go in and set the start and stop time separately for each of these. But now, with the power of fields, you could trigger your animations using fields in Cinema 4D. So if you wanted like a little wave to go across, you could animate this going across and get this nice little wave. Well, boom. And if you didn't like it, come back, try it again. You can also, of course, animate your fields with Signal to produce this animation. So let's just back up, try one more time. Let's go a little bit faster. And now we, we have this nice little front animation and then the rest kind of follow along. And what's nice is there are different settings for these fields. In this case, we're telling it to stop animating as the field moves across. And we have some other settings in here that we'll go over later in the video, but I just wanna show you a basic version. Here's another example. We have the slider game. Same thing, we have a field that is controlling the animation here. And let me show you how easy this is to set up. If we go into each of these sliders here, you can see that they're animating just across. They're, they're just moving from one side of this little board here to the other. You can also see we're using the new easing, which we'll go over here in a moment. And uh, let's see what else they're doing. They're just ping-ponging an animation every 30 frames. And so the only thing left to do is to move this field across to start the animation. You can see there's a new fields tab that's right here, right inside of Signal, and we're using a linear field, and we're using the while intersecting setting. And you can see there's some other settings that allow you to do things like instantly trigger, and you can ignore fall off. You can do a bunch of great things here, all with fields. In this case, let's just go ahead and rewind and hit play. And uh, same thing as the other balls here, you can see that if we just move the field a little bit through our animation, let me widen our field, you can see that towards the beginning, the leading edge of our field here, the animation only moves a little bit. You can see that in the middle of the field right here, the animation's kind of in the middle. And if we close this gap a little bit and make sure that this last one is all the way through the field, this one's animating all the way to the end. So not only can you trigger animations, but you can control the amount of animation as well using all different types of fields. This works with box fields and sphere fields just works across the board when it comes to animating with fields. So same as these balls here, if we re rewind it and go through it, you can see now we have a varied animation that is a little bit of a wave and has some character to it rather than it all starting at the same time. And it's all fully controllable using fields. All right, here's another example of fields using signal. In this case, we're using scale to animate these spheres up and down. They have a little dynamics on them. And you can see they all animate at the same time. And again, we can use any field. In this case, we have a spherical field and a linear field, and both of them can be used. In fact, if I just move this up 
and restart, you can see there is no animation happening. And now if I move this field down, you're gonna see the animation start to happen only on the top level where the field is enacting. And you can also see it's not as much as when I move it down. So the field is actually triggering based on how much of the field is intersecting there. And so again, if we go back to the beginning, instead of them all animating at once like you saw there, we can get a wave of animation just by moving a field through it. Now you can see there's all this variation. And again, we could back off the field and show that this goes all the way down as well. Now I wanted to show you some other settings inside of these fields. So let's just select all of the signals that are on all these spheres here. And you can see inside of signal, we have a fields tab now. You could just turn it off if you don't wanna use it. And then you could drag in any fields into here. You can also select any fields right within this interface, just like you're used to wherever fields are used in cinema. And I wanted to quickly talk about these trigger modes as well. You can see right now we're using the while intersecting mode. And what that meant was as the field was going through the animation, it was intersecting with the field the animation was. And then when we removed the field from the animation, it went back to normal or it went back to the zero state. You can also do the same thing, but ignore the fall off. So then your field is just triggering the animation right from the start and it ignores any of that fall off where it's smaller amount or larger amount. You could also use while intersecting. So what this does is the, it only allows the animation while your field is intersecting. And again, we have a setting here to just ignore the fall off if you just wanna quickly turn that off. So we have a ton of different ways to use fields. And of course, you've seen the linear field in action. Let me show you quickly the spherical field as well. You see all these spheres are just hanging out, doing nothing. Let's go grab the spherical field and let's move it into action here. And you can see it starts to intersect and only bubble up the right side there. Let's move it over to the left side and you can see now only the spheres over here are really interacting and everything else is being pushed away. I'm sure you can see some really interactive and really clever ways to use signal and fields to really trigger some random animations and really just fully give you control over the triggering and starting and the amount of your signal animations. All right, up next, I wanna show you the brand new looper modifier in Signal 3.0. Now, of course, Signal does a great job in helping you add looping animations to your scene, and the new looper modifier turbocharges it, gives you ultimate control over your loops. Let me show you how to set this thing up, get this character moving and grooving right here in Cinema 4D. Now, let's start quickly animating this character using Signal and the brand new looper modifier. We're also gonna be using Drop Zone, which is a new plugin here at Grayscale Gorilla Plus that helps reduce clicks when setting up things like HDRI Link, Signal, and even Gorilla Cam. So in this case, we know that we want to start to animate the rotation of our character, make sure it's selected, and if you want to animate all three parameters, make sure you grab the R side of this little tab here, just drag it up to Drop Zone, and you can see if you just release, it automatically knows you want to set up a signal adds a signal tag and adds all three rotation ready to go for your animation. And so that's how Drop Zone really speeds up your workflow and we're gonna use that again in just a second. But for now, let's jump into the signal tag and open up our modifiers and look at the brand new looper modifier. You can see here, we have the ability to control each of the three animation rotations here separately with different loop points different time offsets, and this is gonna give us full control over our loops. So let's get a basic loop started. Let's go into our uh, spline presets. Let's set up a sine curve, and uh, let's go ahead and start animating like a little head nod here. So what do we got here? He's gonna go up, he's gonna go down. A Couple things here, we do wanna make sure that our loop point is set to the same as our timeline. So in this case, we want it to be 100, and let's just go ahead and set that for all three of these for now. And you can see we have our nice little head nod here. So let's say we also wanted his head to move left and right. You can see in the past, without the looper modifier, your curves would have been tied to the same amount of timing, which gives you this not very pleasing, not very organic animation. And in fact, if you wanted to separate these animations for each of the rotation types, you would have had to have three separate signal tags. 
Well, the looper modifier fixes this and it allows you to set different loop points and time offsets right here. So let's say we want the up and down movement to be much faster. Let's set this to 25 frames. Now we got a serious head nod going here, folks. And uh, we also still have the 20 degree left and right loop point that is on the side to side animation. So let's say we also wanted his head to tilt from side to side this way. All right, let's set this one to 50. And as long as it's a multiple of the full loop rate, we now get a much more unique head nod uh, and, and character animation, all with one tag right here within Signal. You can also offset the time offset to even get more variation for all of your head nodding needs here. All right, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of position as well. And it's this easy to set up. Just go back to your, your main null here and with whatever parameter you're trying to animate, just drag it into drop zone and it'll set up a tag. In this case, we want all three positions. So make sure you grab the P side. If you only want X, for example, you could just drag X in there and you'll get one parameter. But again, if you want all three uh, variables here, just make sure you pick the left side there where it says P, drag it into drop zone and bam, again, it is ready to go. Signal's ready and set. So all we have to do is add another looper modifier. Let's go ahead and animate the, uh, let's go with the Y first, and let's go ahead and set that same uh, sine wave. All right, so now we have the sine wave moving around. Let's go ahead and set this to something similar. I think we're gonna use the same 25 looping point, try to get a head nod that's got a little breaking neck to it. You know what I'm saying? A little, little bit of up and down going. Now that looks pretty good, but the, the timing's a little off. So now with the new looper tab, we could adjust the timing offset. Uh, maybe I went the wrong way. Let's go forward. I want that real, see, see how it's a little backwards. It should go head down when, when the nodding is down. So let's maybe, maybe we just had to go further the other way. Oh, that's, that's getting worse. Let's dial this in. There we go. There we go. Let's adjust it one more time. That's what I'm talking about. See, there's the break your neck. All right, so now we have some variation here. We can also do it the same with our X and he's, he's nodding left and right. Let's go to 100 frames. That might be a little bit too much. Let's dial this one down. You also have control over negative and positive. So for example, if you didn't want that Y position to go negative at all and only up, you could just set it right there and turn off negative or you can reduce, uh, turn off negative and only have positive. So you have all these little dials and controls over your time offset. And right down here, you get all the feedback you need to see what is actually happening to your parameters. Let's go ahead and add Z a little bit to this too. Let's set this one to uh, 50 frames so that it loops perfectly around at our 50, 50 and 100 time mark. And let's also adjust the offset on this one too. So now we have all of this control right here with one or two tags. We get all these parameters with different loop points and gives you some really dynamic control over your animation using the brand new looper tag right here in Signal 3.0. All right, in this scene, I wanted to show you the brand new easing presets that come with Signal 3.0. If I open up this menu, you can see we have a ton of animation presets that you could choose for any Signal tag that'll get you started right away with some of the most popular curves that we use and our customers use in their animations. So let me show you how this is set up. In this scene, we have three cubes here, kind of elongated rectangle cubes, snaking across the floor, and we also have animated camera using signal that is tracking along so that this is a perfect loop. If I turn off the camera, you can see this is really what's happening. We have these three cubes snaking across the floor, and by animating the camera, and by having this tiled floor kind of go through the scene, we're ending up with a perfect loop. However, that is not the most exciting loop there ever was created here in Cinema 4D. So let's add some detail by adding some new preset animations. This first cube, let's go ahead and select signal. You can see down here, we have a brand new easing area. And right now it's set to linear. And up here, it's also set to linear. Now in the past, you could, of course, you know, come in here and say, I want a, a soft point type and uh, animate this curve and get your own custom animation. And of course that is still possible. You can move this and animate it and tweak it to your heart's content. But 
if for common moves that we found ourselves using over and over again, we created this easing tab instead to make it a little bit easier for you to use. So let's set this back to linear. In fact, we have a button right here. Set it back to linear, and now instead you could use our easing presets. So let's click here, open them up, and you can see now that we have not only all these easing presets, we have in and out presets, and then we also have combining in and out presets right here for each type. And if you hover over it, you're actually gonna see a little preview of what this animation looks like. There's a little elastic, there's a bounce animation, there's bounce out, there's both bounce in and out. So you can really get a preview of what these do. Uh, I'm gonna pick back in and out, and you're gonna see this one kinda goes back first, and then it pushes forward, and it loops uh, perfectly, just like all of these presets here. And we're going to uh, use this one for our little glass animation for now. So what's nice is you can do these really quickly now. Come in here, let's pick, uh, let's pick, uh, let's go cubic in and out for this one. This one's just kind of moving. And uh, let's go to our last orange one here. And let's go with bounce out, see what this one does. This one kind of pushes forward and bounces. Boom, boom, boom. Sound effects are optional. Uh, feel free to add them yourself. But uh, we got this one kind of pushing forward. In fact, I want to move the camera a little bit, give this a little bit more leading room. Okay, so now we have three animations all using different presets. But you can see they kind of start and end at the same time, right there. And it's kind of an obvious loop point. So what if you want to add even more variation? Well, of course you can come down here to the offset and just make a different offset for each of your cubes here. And now it's gonna feel a little bit more random and kind of have no obvious looping point as we move forward. So this, of course, is fully compatible with all the other parts here, the start time, the end time, additive, playback, everything else we're using here is fully compatible with these new ease presets. And if you're like me and you find yourself always using these easing curves, you'll find that this saves you a ton of time and allows you to use these presets when you need them rather than have to recreate it every time you use Signal. So that is our brand new easing presets. All right, now I wanna show you one of my favorite new features, and this is the different noise types that are now available inside of the noise tab right within every signal tag. If you've used the noise modifier in the past, you know that you could set variation, you could set a loop point and get perfect looping noise. You can also control the speed, but you really only add one type of noise, and that was just the built-in default noise, and it looks a little bit something like this. It's fine, it works really well, but what if you wanted the noise to be different? Well, now we have noise types. And if we open this up, you're gonna see all of the Cinema 4D noise types are now available inside of the noise tab. And if you choose any of these, you're gonna get a completely new and unique result. So let's go to box animation. And you're gonna see that is a slightly different type of noise. Uh, and let's go to blistered turbulence. This one is much more frantic. Look at how crazy and kind of spastic that one is flinging across the screen there. And of course you have full control. You could slow it down if you want. And this gives you full control over it. And no matter what settings you have, as long as your loop point is set correctly, in this case it's 90 frames, you will get perfect looping noise, no matter how fast or slow you want this thing to go. All right, let's slow this thing back down. Let's check out a couple more examples here. Uh, let's go uh, with Booyah, that's always fun to say. You can see this one's really contrasty. It's actually kind of really dark down here and then the, the noise kind of pushes things way up and to the right for, uh, for like white points. And in this case, you also have this bias slash contrast control that gives you full control over the contrast. So if you want that animation to be a little bit less contrasty and a little bit more floating in the middle, you could turn it down or you can of course crank it all the way up and you'll get these really contrasty noise types. So for example, if we go to something like Naki and we tone down the contrast, you can see the noise is gonna float more in the middle of your animation and it'll basically be less varied. And as you crank up the contrast, the more variation there is and the more contrast and speed your noise has. This unlocks a ton of new potential when it comes to looping noise in Cinema 4D, and if we go back to something like this box animation, gives you unlimited control when you're using noise 
in your signal animations to continue to get random variations, but that still loop. And that's the really key here with the noise modifier and signal is all of these noises remain loopable for your scene, no matter which noise type you pick. So if you use the noise modifier as much as I do in Signal, you're gonna love this brand new addition with all of the Cinema 4D noise types right here within Signal 3.0. And finally, I wanted to remind you that any animatable parameter in Cinema 4D can be used with a Signal tag, not just position, rotation, and scale, but anything animatable, you could drag into Drop Zone and it will automatically make a tag and you can get animating. In this scene, we're actually using Signal to animate a Mo extrude that turns this basic cube into this crazy kind of flower thing. We are using scale and rotation here uh, to animate the cube kind of moving. If we turn off the Mo extrude, you can see what's happening. We're even using a signal on the focal length of our camera to get this kind of zooming animation look. And of course, because we're using the noise tab, uh, we have a perfect looping animation right here. So it's not only for position, rotation, and scale, but you could drag anything that is animatable with one of these dots here right into Drop Zone and you can get animating right away. You can even easily add fields to all of this animation and have full control over the power of these animations using any field type. You can see right here, we're just moving in and out and creating unlimited amount of control with any one of your animations using Signal. Thanks for watching everybody. And don't forget, if you're a Plus member, you can go download Signal 3.0 and a bunch of other new stuff that we just launched over in your Grayscale Gorilla Hub. Go there, download everything and get started. It's a bunch of new stuff. And if you're not a member, you can go join today and get instant access to everything you saw in this video. And of course, everything else in the Grayscale Gorilla library that we've created to help you speed up your workflow and make better looking renders today. So thanks again, everybody for watching and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.